Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Rev. Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Good evening, good evening, and welcome to our broadcast on 7 p.m. Bible study class, the theme is called Stay Fired Up About Your Faith. About your faith. <laughs> and mine too. Praise the Lord. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for the healing. My name is Pastor Gary Mack. I'm one of the associate pastors of the United Shallow Baptist Church. One church in two locations where our senior pastor is Dr. Reverend James Allen Douglas. Can we get a little praise real quick? We. <laughs> Yeah, I need you to get home, you need to relax and everything. I need you to grab your Bibles. It is an exciting class tonight. This is my last class. I'm truly thankful and blessed to be with you tonight. The Lord have a word to be able to deliver to your spirit. And I just pray right now that you would join in with me with a word of prayer. And we're going to go right into our lesson. Amen. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your tender mercy and your grace. Uh, we thank you for your love and kindness that you share towards us each and every day. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, as we begin to break bread together through the word of God, that you would open our hearts, open our minds. Lord, go with us. Minister to us our needs, our deep thoughts and our needs, Lord, because we need you now more than ever. Lord, we can't make it on this journey without you. So now we take the time out right now to say, Lord, be with us through this Bible study class. I pray that every scripture that's read, every story that's told, be a blessing to someone in the kingdom and to someone that don't know me in the part of this sin. That they would cry out, what must I do to be saved? So Lord, we thank you and we count it all done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you give the word a hand clap right where you are? We're live on the Facebook and um, on YouTube. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, SBC Praise Church. And also we're live on Facebook. Some of you probably watch it now. I want to thank you for a lot of the comments from last week. And I pray that you will enjoy this class today. And then we're going to get right in it. Um, Y'all know my declaration. This is the last class. We're going to do it again. Our declaration to the Lord. I need you to repeat after me. I am healed through his word and the power of God. I am healed through his word and through the power of God. How many of you believe that? If you believe, give God a praise. The class is called, it's time for healing. It's time right now for you to claim your healing. Being healed from the inside out. You guys know the thing. The scripture, our foundation of scripture that we've been dealing with all week, is called, uh, excuse me, Psalm 107 and 20. He said, He sent His word and healed them. He sent His word and healed them. We're going to start right here. This picture right here is um, very dear to my heart here. And so, a couple of brothers here from Shadow Baptist Church. Uh, you all remember reading um, Mike Williams. Uh, Miss that, brother. He's going on to be with the Lord. But this was a picture when he was baptized, another co-worker of mine who moved away and he had just gave his life to the Lord. And when I took this picture, I was looking through my album, I said, you know what, I want to make this a part of my Bible study class because these two brothers, I knew them when, when I was younger. And we, we all had a past and they had a rough life, but I seen how God was able to turn both of their lives around and bring them into the church and they became Fisher of men. This brother right here is a very important, Deacon Mike Williams, a very important, I'm still here, child of the church. I see his work ethics, I see his love for the Lord, I see how he would go to the edges and the highways and compel them to come to Christ. And that is something to be excited about. I thank God for the brother. He's in heaven resting right now, and we will see each other again when it's all over. Amen. This scripture right here reminds me of what they went through. 
and him telling his testimony to me time after time, it really was a blessing to me. Brought him from darkness to the marvelous light. He used to always say that he was he was in a deep darkness and he thought there was no hope. But somehow the word of God came to be friends and family, telling them about the Lord, and they seen the gift that was in him. They didn't give up. And through his pain, he came in to shout back to church. And he went to other church first before he came here. But he heard the word of God. Psalm 107 said, He sent his word and healed them. The word of God was sent to my brother, and he received the word of God, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later, how to receive the blessing. But this scripture right here, Psalms uh, 107 and 20, he healed them from their destruction, their dark place, their pain, their addictions, whatever they may have been going through that kept them separated away from their God. God came and healed them. He delivered them from their destruction and from their pit or from their suffering, meaning the grave. That is the death that which they were near. We were all near that death until we made a decision in our spirit. The Bible says in uh, John 15, 16, that he didn't, we didn't choose him. He chose us. But we had sense enough to go and receive the word of God in our spirit. And that's where the transformation began. And I'm so thankful. Which we were near, death, which we, they were near. Others rendered from their nets and snare or snares. Others, their destructions, the disease in which they were miserable and a prisoner. We were prisoners to sin until Jesus Christ stepped in and hung on the cross and died for you and I. We were lost. We were in our pit. But thanks be to God of his mercy and grace and his love towards us that he shed his precious blood. And those who accepted him now are healed spiritually. But we got to know how to keep that. And how do you keep it? Through the word of God. Amen? Stay with me. We're going somewhere here. Be ye transformed for your healing. This is the third class. This is the final class. This is what we're going to be talking about here. Mind protection and control. We're going to be talking about communication and application. Good versus bad information. And last but not least, receiving your blessing. Truth, salvation, and healing. I'm going to start with right now. Arm yourself. This is one thing you got to do when it comes down to protecting your mind. You got to arm yourself with the Word of God. The Bible tells us clearly put on the whole armor of God. I love this scripture. Ephesians 6 19. Please write it down. We know this scripture. We heard it. But it says, and take. And take the helmet. Meaning you have to do something. It's not going to work on your own. You can't sit there expecting the Lord to come and bless you. You've got to seek him. He said, seek me while I can be found. So you're going to have to take on something to protect your mind. You have to protect what the enemy is trying to come against. He's trying to plant every seed he possibly can to throw you off. They cause you to be an angry and a nasty and a bitter person. So the, the word of God says protect your mind. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Can I stop right there? You cannot be free unless Christ sets you free. There is no other way. Don't be mistaken by a lie from the enemy or by somebody else that don't know Jesus Christ. He said in John 14, verse 6, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by him, Jesus Christ. The Word of God. The Word that became flesh in 1 John, verse 14. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart. Okay. The enemy wants to come after your mind. Uh, George Meyer wrote a book years ago called The Battlefield of the Mind. The enemy has a strategy that he knows can tear down God's people. And he knows it begins with a thought. And he placed that thought in your mind. He gives you a picture of something horrible or defeat or something you lost or you could never recover. But God got a way of restoring everything that was lost. And in this book, we call the Battlefield of the Mind of Jewish Myers. She was uh, ministering to people, letting them know that you got to guard that mind. Because the enemy is trying to tear your family apart. 
He tried to ruin you in relationship with your children, even on your job, in your leadership responsibility in church. If you learn how to guard your mind, you can do some serious damage everywhere and everything you touch. So you have to guard your heart because if you don't guard your mind, it's going to seep into your heart. And the Bible says where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Out of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. You want to show people who you really are. But you got to make sure what's getting down to your heart, through your mind, is godly. It's the word of God. It's a solid foundation. It's something that can give you strength to go on to that next level and to be able to carry somebody else along with you. It's a battle. And it's out of your mind. The enemy is out of your mind. Thoughts of this world. In this case, we talk about the ungodly. These are the things, not only the ungodly, but the godly rest of these as well. <laughs> evil thoughts, just evil, angry. That is because of some past hurts that you never learn how to deal with. Somebody might have talked to you wrong. They might have touched you. They might have did something to you that you didn't like. Or you might have seen it demonstrated in your family through a family member, a parent. We picked up some good habits, but we also picked up some terrible habits. And these are some of the habits that we take up that, guess what? If we don't turn it loose, if we don't lay it at Christ's feet, if we don't lay it at our safety feet, we can pick it up and we, we can do destruction to everything we touch and everybody we come in contact with. Why is the church sometimes in dis disarray? It's because we haven't learned how to deal with that inner hurt and we bring it into the church and we continue to hurt people that love us. And we try to praise God. We have a good service one Sunday, but the next Sunday, everything is all chaos. Not in the building, but in your spirit. And you rob God what's due unto him. He deserved all the praise. He deserved your best praise. He deserved the highest praise. You can't say hallelujah if you're bound up and not free. The Lord want to set you free, and he want to set you free through his word. Hatred. You just bitter. It comes in many different colors and many different sizes. But we haven't learned how to control it. We haven't learned how to block it. He said, take on the helmet of salvation. Guard what gets into your spirit. Guard what the enemy is trying to place and try to cause destruction in your life. You can cast down those imaginations. He gave you the authority to do it. Mani man manipulation. I got it. <clears throat> manipulation. And what that is, is you take on a form of, of that spirit that the enemy planted in you. And what we do, we take advantage of the people that we love. We can cause, we can inspire them to do good, or we can inspire them to do evil. And sometimes we take advantage when we know how to speak the word of God, but we don't know how to be doers of the word of God. And what we can do, we can cause more damage than good because we are using it to, to our advantage, whatever our goals are, whatever our needs are. And we, twinted, we tend to grab God's word and twist it to our favor. But I want to share with you, you want to be careful in that area. You may fool people, but you're not going to fool God. That is the spirit that the enemy is placing us. Some people look at it as a gift. People are drawn unto you. They listen to you. And when you see that you have that gift and you don't give it back to God, or give praise back unto God from the gift that God gave you, sometimes you can use it in the wrong vein. So you gotta be careful in that area. That's a big You take advantage of people who trust you. Unforgiveness, oh my God, Lord have mercy. They done something to you when you was 13 years old. You 75 years old now, you still carrying that. I'm not making fun of nobody age, but this is how we carry pain for so long we don't lay it at the feet of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, bring your burdens unto me and leave them there. We keep wanting to pick things up. We have the power to be able to cast those things down. Can I get a witness? Do you want to say amen? False accusations. A spread of lies. You're controlling. It always has to go your way. That's dangerous. Because you hurt people along the way. And it stopped them from being effective. It stopped them from, from guess what, operating in the gift that God gave them. 
because they look at you as somebody in a leadership role. They respect you. This is what my, my kids had to mention to me. They said, Dad, you're our father. We can't talk back to you in front of you. We know what you're going to do. So we respect you, but it always got to go your way. My wife shared this with me. I know you can relate to it. We don't do it intentionally, but when somebody brings it to your attention, you need to take heed to it. Because if it's causing damage, it can affect their growth. This is things that are deeply rooted people have been carrying so long. They've been married for 40 and 50 years and still haven't been able to have a good day together where they can appreciate each other. Why am I talking about this? Because these are the areas when you come down to serving God in church, in your home, wherever you're at your job, your witness, it affects us because there's damage there that only God can heal. And he's been waiting for you to turn it over to him. We keep talking about, oh, my stomach hurt, my headache, uh, I, I got back aches. And we keep overlooking that deep-rooted pain that will set the captive free. I know I'm talking to somebody. Stay with me. Stay with me, please. Self-pity. Woe is me. It's all about me. Me, me, me. Mind protection and control. Romans 12. Here we go. Here's the word of God. Send his word. I'm sending the word to heal you right where you are. You heard this over and over again, but I need you to listen very carefully to this as I read it. It says, and do not be conformed to this world. The world thinks differently from children of God, those that know the word of God. Don't be consumed. Don't be conformed. Don't start acting like the world when there's liberty at your feet. It's at your door knocking. But you want to think like the world. I'm defeated. I can't make it. I feel like giving up. I feel like throwing in the towel. It ain't worth it. Those are all negative thoughts that the enemy put in your spirit. And what we did, we started talking and acting like the world. But we're not of the world. We have been bought with a price. We have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. He set us free through his blood, this precious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for you and I. It says, be, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to think different. You got to think, I am more than a conqueror. God cares for me. He cares about everything that I'm concerned about, the big, small, large, it doesn't matter what it is. God knows you. He created you. He knows everything about you. He knows what your path will be. He knows your end from the beginning. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you. Good and not evil. And he said, I have a perfect and expected end for you. If you just trust me. Trust the word. The removing of your mind that you may prove what is good and perfect and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's will is perfect. His will is not our will. We talked about in class one about death, the pain of death. Um, I'm not going to say nobody is willing or ready to die, but I'm not ready to go right yet. But when my time comes, I can't do anything about it. God controls my time. He knows everything because his will is perfect. And when you lose a loved one, I know the pain of losing a loved one. Nobody wants to lose a loved one. My mother and father have been gone now for years, but it was up to me. They'll be 203 years old. It was up to me. I'll keep them around. I'll keep them around forever because there's somebody that I love. But guess what? God left them more than he had. He said, this is not our home. He said, I went to prepare a place for you. John 14. And where I am, there you may be also. I don't know about y'all, but that's something to shout about. When I feel like giving up, I can't give up. Because I didn't do this for my own. He done it for me. He opened the doors for me. When I gave up, he didn't give up on me. He placed people in my life to encourage me. And I pray that I'm encouraging somebody right now. The word of God is what kept me. And the word of God is what drew, uh, dried those tears up off of my pillow. Because it's all I had. When a touch wasn't enough. When a hug wasn't enough. 
the word comfort me. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's move on with that. Don't think like the world. We must identify the root cause of our hurt slash pain. Mind and spirit, these are, these are some areas. Depression is big. I, I used to dance around that word. People said they were depressed. And I'm like, depressed? Oh, ain't nothing. But depression can ruin your life. You can feel all alone, forsaken, and be around a crowd of people. Anxiety can do the same thing. You can be so depressed that you got loved ones all around you that care about you, and you're just in a funk. You're in a cloud. You have no idea where you are. No happiness, no joy. It is a sad place, but the enemy has planted in your spirit, and the Lord can set you free. Yeah, take your medicine. Get your therapy or training or whatever, whatever you may need. Whatever you need to do to get your body in line, but please don't run away from the word. The word of God is true. Sometimes it hurt, but it definitely is. Stay right there. Stay right there. Worry and fear. We worry about everything. We worry about our children. We worry about our finances. Hey, are we going to keep this house? Are we going to keep this car? I get it. Those are things that we worry about. But the Bible says, don't worry. He tells us, he said, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but I gave it love, power, and a sound mind. He said, don't worry if you really know who I am. I never forget. I got to tell the story real quick, and I'm going to move right along. I remember years ago, I'd say about 10 or 15 years ago, I had hurt my back, and I was off for a month straight. Um, then I got well, I went back to work, got hurt again, re-injured my back, and I was out for another month. And that was two months altogether because I was only there for a couple days and had to go back out. But during that time, the bills was piling up. My wife was working, but I was a breadwinner. I was, you know, bringing home some bacon and some eggs and a little bit of grits. <laughs> I, I, I was doing my thing, but when I was off, the you know the money, the, the disability was running dead. It wasn't what I normally bring home if I was working. And I don't know about you, but in some homes, it don't take much to get behind. Still got to feed, still got to put food on the table, got to pay the bills. Kids got to go to school, they need clothes. All those things never stop. You know what I'm talking about. And I remember sitting home moping and whining and complaining. And I was sitting on the couch and I watched my wife and the kids that got on a bicycle and they were riding around uh, in the front yard and they went down the road. And I was feeling less than a man that I couldn't take care of my family because we were struggling. And I was off work. So I was in my little pity party, my little funk. And what happened was I started stomping around and I had it on TV and Pastor John Haney was preaching. And he said, he was preaching on praising God in the middle of your storm. And I had a nerve to say, let me do that. Let me try. And mind you, I didn't start out sincere. I went to walk around the house by myself, I threw my hands in the air. Oh my Lord, Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Walk around the house. Then all of a sudden I said, one, two, many Jesus. And I began to feel this presence coming in the And it was so strong. I know the presence of the enemy. This was the presence of God because I wanted it to stay and I didn't want it to leave because I felt a warmth, I felt a coolness, and I also felt fearful. Because when he showed up, he spoke to my spirit. And I remember falling down on the ground and I began to repent and say, Lord, forgive me for not trusting you, for not putting my faith in you. You've done this for me before, and I know you can do it again. I was weeping on the floor from the inside out, crying. And he began to pick me up. I, I need you to hear me. You ain't got to believe it. I was there. I felt it as he was picking it. He said, I was the God who was whispering in my spirit. I am the God that was dead yet live. I am the God that opened up blind eyes. He said, I am the God that divided the Red Sea. And he said these words to me that I'll never forget. I share every time I preach when I get an opportunity. He said, if you really knew who I was, good God Almighty, y'all don't hear me. He said, if you really knew me, he said, there's nothing you can name that I can't handle. I come to tell you, there's nothing you're going through. I don't care how deep the hurt is. 
God said, I got, I got a remedy for that. Trust me. And that's what he told me. He said, if you really knew me, if you really knew my word, if you really knew what I'm able to do for you and anybody else, you wouldn't worry about the thing. Stop thinking like the world. You belong to me. Can we get an amen? Can I get an amen for that? Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm sorry for taking so long, but I had to share this story. Body, flesh, sickness, we're going to move right along. Heal another mind through humility. Oh, Philippians 2, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like minded. Be like Christ. Think like Christ. He didn't let nothing stop him from his purpose, from his mission, what God called him to do. And if God called you to do something through your pain, that deeply rooted pain of yours, that one that you don't want to discuss with anybody, you got to keep moving forward, honey. Sir, you got to keep moving and trust in God. And he will give you the strength to be able to get through it. And before you know it, you'll forget about that pain. Because you're doing what God called you to be like-minded with him. Having the same love. Don't miss that. Remember I talked about unforgiveness earlier? We don't love anybody. We pick and choose who we want to love. God has placed some people in our life that God says, I call you to love them. Show them love. Show them mercy. Spend a little time with them. Let them know that, they, that you care about them. Let them know that they are important, not only to Christ, but to you. This is our mission, church. And we're supposed to be equipped with the Word of God so we can take the Word of God to the world. we got to be an example. we got to be like-minded. I remember the man in uh, chapter, uh, Mark chapter 5, the man that was possessed of demons. Jesus made it across the sea to see and to meet his needs. Disciples didn't know where he was going, but when Jesus got off that boat, Jesus knew exactly what he was on. He said, I come to seek and save that which is lost. And those demons, which were legions, which was many, could not hold a man down who Christ wanted to set free. I'm talking to somebody here. That's something to praise God for. Can't no demons hold you. Not if you seek death. Fell down on his knees, bowed up down, and Jesus said, Did you come to torment us before our time? These are demons talking. But there was a man on the inside. Jesus said, I came for you. You hear that pain? I'm talking to you. That deep pain. I'm talking to you. Jesus is coming through this airway, through this microphone to you. He said, I come for you because I love you. The enemy tried to tell you that I didn't love you, that I didn't care because you lost some things. But the Bible tells us clearly to be absent from the body is to be present with him. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it been into the heart of man. God has all these blessings in store for his people, but you got to learn how to guard your mind. Don't believe the lie. The lie of the enemy. Same mind, according to According to one mind, one mind, one mind, keep that in mind. The mind of Christ, Philippians 2, 3 and 5, I'm just going to continue with the scripture. It says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of the mind, let each esteem others. If they care for others, esteem others than himself. Don't always put yourself on the house. Take, take a step back. Take a step back and help somebody. I got countless stories I can tell you how I bless people, but I blessed them in the wrong way. I did it because I knew it was the right thing to do, but there was nothing in my heart. And then there was some people I did bless, and I blessed with my heart. I felt compassion upon them. And you should see the results that God would give you. Oh my God, I felt like I was walking on cloud. I know I made God proud because I was nowhere in the picture. The love that was in me that Christ put in my heart was the one that was demonstrated. I know what I'm talking about, y'all. I just wish somebody to get me in there. You say amen? Okay, I hear you. I hear you through Facebook. Let this mind, that's what I want to get to. Let this mind be in you, 
which is also in Christ Jesus. I don't have to say it anymore. The Word of God speaks for itself. Communication and application. I, I'm, 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 running, I'm rushing through this, but everybody can relate to this. Communication and application. Good information based on facts and truth. That's what we need to be doing in order to help those that are hurting. Hi, what does it have to do with hurting? If we give them bad information, we, we, we talk for manipulation or self-ambitious, and we're doing things for ourselves and not for the glory of God, we can hurt those that are already hurt, and we can, we can destroy them and cause them to not even want to fellowship. Change religion. I've seen religions change. People change their religion, their belief system, because there was some bad information given. Because they had their eye on people instead of on the word of God. They didn't know that God deals with us all through love and forgiveness. If Christ came and forgave us, why can't we forgive? He said he didn't come into the world to condemn. He came that the world might be saved. He tells us to judge not, lest you shall be judged. He said condemn not, lest you shall be condemned. He gave us clear instructions through the word of God. And all we have to do is listen with our mind and our spirit and our heart. Amen? Bad information based on, based on lies and the untruth. Look at the root word. Commune and apply. Commune is a dialogue. You speaking to God, he's speaking to you. You can't be the only one talking. You got to let his word talk to your heart. Communicate. Bad communication is not good, but the truth will set you free. Communication, the imparting or exchange of information or news. Means of sending or receiving information. These are some of the similar words here. Transmission, imparting, conveying, reporting, presenting good information. This is what we need to be focused on, making sure that somebody's hurting and they have something they're dealing with that's affecting their relationship or their home and the church. Or no matter where it might be, just coping with their own self. Sometimes we're our worst enemy. We don't even like us. And we're sick in our body because our spirit man have been damaged. We got to know how to communicate with ourself and our spirit to be able to encourage. We got to do like David did. David had to learn how to encourage himself. In a time of trouble, when everything was turning against him, they was killing him. His wife was gone. His kids was gone. They tried to kill him. David had to run. David had to hide from King Saul. But David, no. He said, God has done it before. He'll do it again. When I was out there tending sheep, a lion and a bear came. And God made a way for me. I know he'll do it again. But on the journey, he got discouraged. But he had to learn how to encourage himself. He had to speak to himself to get himself back in line. David had the word that was passed on through lineage and generations that gave him the power to be able to encourage himself. Application, very important. You got to make sure you apply the word gentle, with love, compassion, and with truth. What I love about Jesus and Peter, he loved Peter, he called Peter the rock. He called Peter, he said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell will prevail against it. But he also told him, get out of my face, you devil. You're going to deny me three times before the chicken even crow. Jesus had to tell him the truth even though he loved him. Sometimes we got to tell him, hey, you know what, you know, cut that out. That's not true. Don't, don't run chasing that lie. You know you don't have that in you. But we got to do it when we're not trying to do it. Jesus didn't do it in a crowd of people. He spoke to Peter. He said, Peter, get, you're talking from the voice of Satan. Get, get thee behind me. I love you, but right now, get behind me. You don't let your mind be attacked from the enemy. Applying the word. I remember the book I was reading, um, uh, The Seven Laws of Le Le Learn. And one of the chapters was called Application. It's saying that when you're teaching, when you're in front of anybody, you're teaching them a word, you got to engage with them. You got to make sure the listener is understanding exactly what you're saying. And not only that, you feel the vibe back to them that they're receiving the word of God. That's when you know you're applying the word correctly. And I hope somebody is accepting what I'm teaching tonight. Okay, yeah, you might be a Bible scholar. You might know more words than me. You might be able to pronounce the words better than I can. That's all right. But I'm confident right where I am because I know who I am in Christ. 
And I know he gave me the gift to be able to encourage somebody. And I'm talking to you right now. The word of God. I'm going to give you what's in my heart. My daddy's always telling me, stay in your lane, son. Stay in your lane. But if all you know is Jesus wept, you stay right there. But you be the best Jesus wept talking that you ever can be. And watch how life change. Because you're not acting like anybody else. You're being who God created you to be. And you can be effective. And guess what? You also have to encourage yourself and be able to accept your role and know how effective you are. I know somebody's life is going to be changed because mine was. I had to go through some pain. I had to go through some hurt. And that's why the title of the class is time for healing right now. We can't go through this COVID-19 era we're living in. This racial justice, injustice, and all the anger and bitterness that happened in all over the world. Financial issues, the climate uh, and weather changes. We can't survive if we haven't learned how to trust in God through his word. Through his word. I wish I could stay here, but I can't. I got to move on. Handle God's word with care. Write these scriptures down. I can't go through them. 2 Timothy 2 15, James 1 22. I'm going to read the last one for 1 Timothy 4 16. It says, Keep a close watch on yourself and the teaching. Persist in this. For by so doing, you will save both yourself and the hearers. If I do it with words, and keep a close watch over me. Don't get too big headed. Because somebody said it was a good message. That you forget the reason why God called you to minister to others. Because there was something in you. I'm talking to somebody. There's something in you. You've been sitting down on your gift. God said, it's time to get up. When it says it's time for healing, Healing means you got to get up out of that dry place. You got to move because God got work for you to do. Please write these scriptures down. Apply the healing through the word of God. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2. Be imitators of men. That is good. One. Please read that. Philippians 4 and 9. It says, it says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. What a great example, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, 5, 6, and 7. Jesus is all of the Bible, all the New Testament. But if you really want to see the heart and the mission of God, read those three chapters, and you'll get an in-depth of who Jesus Christ is. And he says, be innovative. Learn from those things. Paul could have had a bad day. Peter, Mark, all James, John. They can have bad days. Jesus had a bad day when whipping somebody in church because of what they were doing wrong. The true virgin, the Lord of Beach. A little bit. <laughs> Healing should always be a part of your message. <laughs> it was foretold in the Old Testament that he should arise with the glory of the morning sun. Come on, y'all. Somebody help me out. Bring healing in its wings. For all our sickness and accordingly, the New Testament relates that Jesus went about Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. You keep looking at the lame walking. You keep looking at the blind eyes open. You keep looking at the woman with the issue of blood woman that was been over for years, but you were getting the life pain, that deep-rooted pain they had to live with while they were going through a physical ailment. Their spirit was a wreck. And Jesus came and identified that pain and said, here I am. I am your healer. Do you believe that? Give God the praise for that. Receive your blessing. I don't, I just don't do this. You wonder why you are still stuck hurting and oppressed, it is because we never learn how to receive the truth. We never learn. Truth is the blessing. I don't know about y'all. A lie can be a curse. It can be damaged. It can be detrimental. It can cause delays. But the truth, you might not like it all the time, but if it's spoke with love and compassion and somebody speaking cares behind it, it would change your life. I, being a young man and being a, you know, I'm six feet 11, 
No, five, five and a half, depending on what kind of shoes I'm wearing. But I love sports. I love to play baseball. My family was uh, athletes, and I love baseball, basketball. Basketball, I loved it more while I was better at baseball. But basketball, I had a passion for it. And every time they was picking uh, teams, because they viewed me from a distance, from a height, they thought I would benefit them by being on their team, and that they probably couldn't win with somebody in my stature. Listen, I'm talking to somebody here. Don't, don't let the height fool you. you. You're dealing with something else. But that was a pain I had to deal with because I had to work hard at everything I did because I had a love for something. When you got a love and compassion for something, you will work hard at it, and it doesn't matter what people say about you. If you praise it too loud in the church, it don't matter if you got a heart and compassion for it. I got out there, I put in the work. I, I, I lived in Cedarville and I went to Brooklyn High School. They didn't have a night bus to take me home after practice. I had to catch a ride or uh, wait and uh, beg somebody to take me home. Sometimes I walked halfway home before I even got a ride until my brother got done doing what he was doing to pick me up. But I had a passion and love for it. And because I put the time in, because I loved it, God blessed me to be a starter. I was one of the five my freshman year. Out of all the people, more taller than me, maybe more athletic and jump higher than me, but because I put the time and I had the passion for it, it hurted me because my height wasn't what they needed. But what I needed is that encouragement that came from my passion. All you need is a passion for something that can help heal the hurt. Amen. Truth is the blessing of what God can and has already done. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by him. He is the truth. And the truth has already been that God has already demonstrated his love towards us. All we have to do is learn how to receive your blessing. People want to give you things. We, we keep turning away and hurting people's blessings. When they want to give you money, a financial gift, or give you a gift card, whatever it may be, they see something in you that they respect and love, and they just want to be able to sow into you. And because we haven't learned how to receive the blessing, we give it back to them or give it to somebody else. And what you did, I know God still want to bless them, but look what kind of pain you may have cost them when you've been teaching them how to give, and then when they learn how to give, you turn back the blessing. We have done this times of time with our kids. We have stumped their growth because we haven't learned how to truly receive the blessing from God. I know what I'm talking about. I can't say it wrong. Truth from the word of God or the truth of your pain to share. We got to be able to share some of the stories that we have lived, those horrible stories that you really don't want to bring up because generation curses do follow our family. It might skip a generation. You might have been an alcoholic and your son wasn't, but his kids became one. Why? Because we haven't learned how to kill that spirit that's been traveling our family. The power of prayer. Getting down on your knees is intercession, prayer, interceding for others, for your children and other people. But you've got to learn how to take it to God's feet. And you also have to learn how to share the word of God with others because your story, your pain, can set somebody else free. Can I get it in? The truth will set you free. John 8, 31, 32. So Jesus said unto the Jews who have believed him, If you abide in me in my word, and you are truly my disciple, if you, you're following me, if you truly are, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. First job, this is, why, this is what confession comes in. So you can't tell everybody you're talking, but you try to tell somebody because the word said you. God has sent somebody God in your family or Maybe not be God, and still will listen to you and give you good instruction. First John 1 is to confess your sin first unto him, but he is faithful and just uh, and will forgive us of our sin, our hurt, our pain, our agony, whatever we may be going through. That's what he will do and purify us from all our unrighteousness. Wrong way of living, the wrong way of doing things. You cannot be afraid to discuss the situation with God or with God sent people. Philippians 4, 
6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, and I be virgin, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, presenting your request to God. Amen? Presenting yourself. Be thankful for what you're going through. Be thankful for where you are. Be and present it unto God. James 5, 16 says, Confess your fault. Here it is. Share it with somebody that you can trust. Confess your faults one to another and pray with one another that you may be healed and a fervent affection for the righteous and fail of much. It will accomplish what it says. Salvation is a lesson. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Please hear me. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish shall not die, shall not hurt spiritually. Their soul will be at rest with their Lord and Savior. Don't have no harm. If you learn how to trust the word, you can be healed from the inside out. I'm a witness. And my closing, get your spiritual healing right now. You don't have to wait. You heard the word. Accept it. Receive your blessing. And accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He's standing at the door right now, knocking at your heart. Yes, I know you're a believer, but you take this word, just like I gave it to you, and you give it to the world. Give it to your family with love, compassion. Guard your mind. Guard your heart. All these things. Communicate it well. Make sure you apply it with love and compassion. And watch what God did. He can turn this world around. All this evil in the world, we know it's not a home, but we have the power of prayer, and prayer changes things. Closing in the foundation scripture, the supported scripture we started with, his word who healed them was his essential word. Even the second person in the Godhead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the word who was made flesh and dwelt among us. He sent Jesus and you can have Jesus right now. If you will bow with me as we close, I thank you for your time. I thank you for putting up with me these three weeks. But I know this word of God was given to me from God on. And if you receive this in your heart, you can be free from any pain, deep and rooted, placed in there by the enemy or with self-inflicting wounds. Something you put there and you didn't want to deal with. God says, bring it unto me. Lay it at my feet. And if anybody out there in the sound of my voice that don't know Jesus Christ, or you just struggle, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, you can do that right now. Take this opportunity right now to open your heart. My father, these are always here. He's a preacher. And at the end of this message, he's always said, tomorrow is not a promise. He said, tomorrow the sun can very well shine on your grave. The enemy has convinced us that we have time. But the time is in God's hands. And the time is now for you to heal. Let God heal you from the inside out. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gary Mack. I love you. See you Sunday.